fighting tanks, but the, the basic chassis is the same and still in use. Now, the next two tanks that are coming are American. The leading one is the M60A1, one of the pattern family of um, medium tanks by American standards. It's been followed by the huge M103. M103 was a heavy gun tank. And the point behind this is that while the M60s were down there on the Russian plane, mixing and mingling with Russian tanks, the big gun M103 would be standing off dealing with the heavier German Russian armor and with any of the smaller tanks that the patterns missed. Now the pattern family stretches right back to the M26 that appeared at the end of the war. M60A1 is this form is probably the high point of the design. By this time they had adopted the British 105 millimeter gun. They were using torsion bar suspension and they had an air-cooled continental diesel engine in the back, a fully automatic transmission which makes the driver's job a heck of a lot easier. And uh, a fully cast hull and turret. They're very great on, on these big scale castings, something you don't see on that many other tanks. The M60 has a separate little um, turret for the commander above the main turret. The belt tanks, typically the American tanks, have a heavy machine gun on top of the turret for the commander to use. But while we go round, something to have a quick look at, because it'll come in later. On both tanks, either side of the turret, sometimes in the middle, sometimes near the front, you'll see a couple of little flaws, one on each side. And these are actually armoured covers for the end of rangefinders. They're old fashioned front turret rangefinders with eye pieces of each end. And you adjust them, adjust the focus until you've got the two images in one, and that tells you you're on target the exact range to the thing you want to shoot at. Now it's something the British have hardly ever used. They're very common on the American tanks, the Germans use them, the French use them. Um, but we didn't.